Hey guys, um, a lot of people have asked me for my bread recipe over the years, so I figured it's finally time to go out and <laughs> finally make a YouTube video or something, how to uh, basically make all the bread. So basically, um, I'll show you all the ingredients right here, and then we will get started on how to properly make some bread. So here are the basics for items that you want to buy just so that you're ready to actually make the bread. It's really only a four ingredient thing. We're going to start with some King Arthur flour. I prefer the 12.7% uh, protein content, but if you use other flours, you could always modify the recipe slightly to get different characteristics. I just happen to like working with this one. You should be getting some active dry yeast, some pure sea salt, and the last ingredient really is just water. So as far as tools go, you're gonna to wanna to have a solid measuring cup. You're gonna to wanna to have a scale because everything that we do is gonna be measured in grams or basically weight. If you use volume as a measurement, you could compact your flour and then things get kind of messy. So other than that, you're gonna want some measuring spoons. You wanna have a dough whisk, but I am poor and I don't have one. So I make do with a fork and then What's important really is to have a, you know, a solid baguette pan that will give you kind of the ridges so that the baguette will form and rise correctly. And also it adds some, basically these little dots will bake into the bottom of the baguette and it looks really professional. <laughs> but otherwise we have a cooling rack um, and then we have a large metal bowl to mix things in. Then other than that, I wind up using some saran wrap just to keep the bread sealed in. And those are the basic items that you need. So first off, basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is measure out a weight of flour, yeast, and salt. And for my specific recipe, which I will link in the description, I use uh, 400 grams of unbleached flour. I use four teaspoons of active dry yeast, and then I use basically two teaspoons or two and a half depending on how salty i want it to be um, of uh, sea salt and when you use the sea salt you really don't want to go over three gram or, excuse me three teaspoons because it will really really be salty so basically what you wind up doing is pouring everything into a large usually like a half gallon stainless steel mixing bowl and then we're going to crack open the yeast and we're going to count down for four teaspoons so easy enough, just a nice one, two, three, and four. And then after that, get some sea salt working in. And I'm gonna do today probably two teaspoons. Um, I feel like that's probably been the most consistent uh, yield. A little bit more, you know, more or less isn't gonna kill it, but um, you know, you could feel free to kind of, you know, mix and match with your ratios. What's really important is your flour to water ratio because that's going to affect how the dough really rises. So the yeast, flour, and water ratio is going to be really important to how it rises and the kind of the workability of the dough. The more water you have, the stickier it's going to be. Um, and if you don't have enough water, it's not really going to grow. It's kind of going to be like more of a pizza crust versus a full baguette. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing the ingredients before I mix the water in because basically we want to spread out all the salt, the yeast, and the flour so everything's kind of, you know, mixing with itself early at least. That way you have like an even distribution of your yeast, salt, and flour. And then what I do is I measure out, I think it's 80%, so yeah, 80% water content which for 400 grams winds up being 320 milliliters or 320 milligrams worth of water, which we will see if I got it right on the first try. I was close, I got 318 and a half. And just drop a little bit more in there, even it out. There we go, that's 320. And then what I'm gonna do now is because I don't have a dough whisk, I'm just going to use a fork. You could really get by without a dough whisk, but um, a dough whisk will kind of get everything mixed together a little bit more efficiently because it's meant to mix all the dough. Um, but yeah, now we're just going to add water. Some people like to use mineral water, and I agree that mineral water will 
generally make your bread taste different and have a pretty, you know, depending on the mineral water that you use, like I prefer Evian, you'll have a really good character if you use that. But um, I'm actually not super displeased with my <laughs> Boca Raton tap water for my bread. However, when I lived in Gainesville and was using their tap water, I found it to be really subpar for the flavor of the bread. So when I lived there, I had used a lot of, um, I believe, yeah, I did some Evian. I tried Fiji once, um, which it came out fine. But basically right now what we're doing is just mixing everything up. And you kind of, you know, it's a bit arbitrary when you're mixing your dough. But what you're really looking for is kind of a feel of how because it'll start off, it'll just be, you know, like muddy flour. And then what, it, you know, turns into dough as you mix everything up. Um, I basically look for, you know, hardness as I mix it. Does it feel like it's collected and together? And as you can see right now, this is kind of one just giant big dough ball. So I'm going to say that's probably ready. And we are going to drop the rest of the dough in there. And after this, we are going to wrap it up nice and tightly with some saran wrap. So that way nothing, you know, no flies or nothing really gets in there and it's allowed to kind of grow by itself. It's pretty, it's not critical that you keep this airtight, but it's nice, especially in a small bowl, because <clears throat> you'll basically see as the yeast, you know, starts to feed and create a good, you know, culture here, you're going to literally see a air bubble pop up <laughs> of everything, you know, all the good stuff growing and becoming really good smelling and good tasting dough that will make good smelling and good tasting bread. So just cover it up a little bit and then we are good. All right, so now that we have everything wrapped up and ready to go, you'll see there is our dough inside. I did a okay job of, you know, sealing saran wrap. This bowl in particular just does not like to actually seal super well. So I don't think we're gonna wind up getting a huge uh, air bubble as it, you know, everything grows. But um, what's really important to developing the flavor of the yeast, um, well, not the yeast, the, of the dough, is that you need to have a really long first rise. And depending on, you know, time constraints, you know, sometimes you need to make some bread in a pinch, you're only going to be looking for maybe like a three or four hour rise. And that's really sufficient. However, the longer you let it sit, the better it's going to taste. And that's kind of a rule of thumb. Um, you don't want to have it sitting out in the open, in my opinion, longer than 24 hours, uh, just to avoid, you know, the possibility of any mold or um, any, you know, kind of weird stuff growing into there and getting some funky flavors. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But otherwise, uh, the growth rate of your first rise is heavily temperature dependent. Some people will like to get their flour and their water at the same temperature prior to mixing everything together because it'll generally grow the quickest when everything's at room temp. Um, but generally speaking, the colder it is, the slower it will grow. So on a day like today, where it's kind of like 60-ish degrees out, um, I'm gonna let this sit for a pretty long time. I'm planning on doing a good 24-hour rise for this particular batch, but um, you are, able if you would like to you could totally do a, like a three or four hour rise in person or not in person <laughs> you could do like a three or four hour rise uh out in the open and then slap it in the refrigerator and it'll you know grow there for you could leave i've left it as long as four days and the bread just tasted amazing so um yeah the first rise is really critical and i'll take a few pictures along the way as it grows but um yeah see you tomorrow All right, hello again. We have let our bread start to rise. Now it has settled into a, I think this has been like 26 hours uh, of rising. And you can see that right now the dough has some like bubbles in it and black specks, which is a good thing. That means that everything's kind of breathing and has uh, matured correctly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove our saran wrap from the top of our bowl and then You'll, you'll get like an overwhelming smell of everything that's grown um, as soon as you take it off, which is a good sign. Um, otherwise, basically what I've done is I've completely cleaned the crap out of my kitchen 
because you need to make sure that whatever surface you're working on and you're going to be working your dough on needs to be clean because as you work your dough it's kind of like a big sponge or like a ball of glue and if, they, if there's like even like a little grain of rice or something that gets caught in there it'll be in there and you'll you'll taste it in your bread um i speak from experience but otherwise i'd recommend if you have like long hair if you're a shedder like me wear a hat <laughs> or a hair net because you know you don't want anything foreign in your bread but what we're gonna do before we work it is now that we've cleaned our surface, we're gonna make it really dirty with some flour. And it's gonna stay dirty for a while. So um, don't, you know, if you have the space, reserve it. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you'll have to do a bit more cleaning. But we're laying flour down because once we work the dough, we wanna make sure that it doesn't stick to our countertop too much, then we start losing dough. Um, and we wanna make sure that when we start rolling, uh, basically, you know, you have the room to work with. So what we're gonna do, there's another shot of the dough. Hopefully you can see that. I'm on like a weird camera angle, but what we're gonna do is scoop all of it out. So we're gonna go through and it should, you know, if you sealed your saran wrap correctly, you'll feel it's moist and that's a good thing. Um, you don't wanna let moisture escape because, you know, it's part of what the yeast needs to make good dough and grow. So now we just have a, I'm pretty sure this is called a biga, but um, basically, you know, all your dough. And what we're going to do is we're going to start rolling it twice in on itself, pick it up and switch it over to its side. And as we're doing this, we're kind of remixing all the ingredients and making sure that we're going to start developing the outside crust correctly. So we want our inside to be nice and bubbly and our outside is going to want to be nice and kind of flat on the outside. And you can see I pick it up, twist in, twist in and then over. And you're going to keep doing this until your dough is essentially hard. Um, notice that like, you know, the flour on the bottom here is being picked up and it's on the top of the dough now um, and nothing sticking to the countertop. So this is kind of something that it's difficult when you first start because you need to get a feel for like how the bread is. But um, basically do it until it starts to feel hard. It's solid. It's got its own little, uh, you know, redeveloped self and we're just going to simply drop it right back in. We're going to take our same saran wrap, hopefully you kept it nice and clean, and we're going to recover it and we're going to cover it again for about an hour um, for the second rise. I think an hour is sufficient, however this is also one of those things that's temperature, moisture, content, everything dependent. Um, you'll have to feel it out, but what we're looking for is our second rise to kind of meet up generally where it was in its first rise in terms of like level in the bowl itself. And yeah, I think that's about it. Basically just let the second rise happen and then I'll just take this, put it off to the side somewhere where it can grow nice and peacefully. And you'll see that right now we have some flour. We're just gonna leave this here because you're gonna use it again and you know, why waste the extra flour? Um, one thing of note is as you're working with dough, it'll stick to you. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but I got dough, flour all over my hands. And this is true of all utensils that you work with. And the thing with working with dough is you want to get it off while it's wet because as soon as it hardens it becomes like a you know it's it's a pain in the butt to clean off it's like scraping barnacles from a boat if anybody's ever done that but um basically you're just going to want to make sure that you wash your hands up everything's good and also don't wear clothes that you really care about um at least keeping clean for the day i mean it'll wash off in the washer uh, and dryer but you know you'll get messy. Flour tends to do that, so. <clears throat> All right, so we have waited one whole hour and our bread or our dough is ready to start working. And here's what it looks like so far. So you can see that the outside doesn't really have a ton of bubbles or anything. And that's kind of like where the crust started forming and everything, so. That's pretty cool, hopefully you can see that. I know I'm at a weird camera angle, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start rolling. So to start, we're going to whip out some more flour and make a huge mess because this is where we're going to roll and divide our dough. So this specific recipe yields three um, baguettes. They're not really, I mean, they're baguettes, but um, I usually do it kind of like a rustic ghee style. So it has a lot of uh, flour still on it. So. Um, Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a big knife that I got <laughs> and we're going to put that off to the side for now. 
And I'm going to get all the dough out of the bowl. And we are going to divide it up and roll it. I really should have kind of moved that over there so that way I have better space to roll. That's what I'm going to do really quickly. And let's see, I'm going to pick it up. And you know, again, you got to keep the flour on the countertop so nothing sticks. And you're going to divide it up into three sections that you're going to roll, pinch, and then um, you know, spread out and form the actual baguette. The, um, you could do this by weight. So if you want to whip out the scale again, feel free to do that. I kind of, you know, I've been doing this a while, so I kind of have a good feel for, you know, what it's actually going to be to divide it into three equal parts. Um, the thing to note is that as you work the dough, it will get smaller. So, you know, you really want to divide it based on weight, not just size the first time because it doesn't, you know, size, weight, whatever, doesn't always match up exactly. So your first cut's usually kind of going to be a little more than, you know, a third. Um, it's going to look a little bit bigger uh, on the first workout, but here we go. So what we're going to do is another one of those two pinch rolls and we're going to seal it and try to make sure I didn't really do such a good job that time, but um, basically we're going to pinch it at the ends and we are going to start rolling it. This one wasn't the best, but uh, it's cool. If you ever like fail at this step, you could always add a little bit of water to the dough. And uh, like you could see right here, there's a little slit. I don't really want that to show up in my dough. So I'm gonna put a little bit of water and then pinch again and as good as new. So you're gonna roll it out. And this portion, I took a really long time to actually get this part right. But basically you're gonna roll it pick it up, roll it, pick it up, and spread out. I put a little bit more pressure in the middle because you want to get an even roll out at the end of the day. Ooh, I really didn't do a good job here. I'm gonna drop you back there. And basically you're gonna roll and try to put even enough pressure so that you get one long cylinder. So in and out. And just to show you in a slower motion, I guess, we're gonna go like this. And we're stretching out the dough and flattening it at the same time. And then you are good. And you just simply drop it back on the pan. What we're gonna do is this pan is going to sit here for about, I do for like 20 or so minutes, just to get a, um, <clears throat> just to let the bread rise and kind of settle into the pan again. See if I can do it a little bit better this time. Oops. Let's see. There you go. That's good. And basically, I'm going to roll this one again. Um, we're going to let it rise in the pan. Bring a little more flour over so make sure things are still dry. And um, yeah, it's going to form into itself, grow a little bit in the pan, and then we're going to turn the oven on. Basically, what you kind of want to do is time it so that you have about 45 or so minutes between the rise and the oven getting up to temp. As far as the oven temperature goes, um, I'm going to do 485 degrees and for 22 and a half minutes, I think is my current recipe uh, calls for, but it's kind of up to preference. Um, I like running at a high temperature because what you can do is your bread will rise just enough in the oven as it's actually baking and then the by the time that it's actually finished rising inside the oven, it's about the right size for where you want your crust to start forming, and then it doesn't grow anymore, but still cooks correctly, um, if that makes any sense. There we go, that's number two. Um, and then, yeah, so 485, 22 minutes is what I'm <clears throat> excuse me, gonna work with today. And you can experiment on this. This is also something that's like pretty dependent on the oven itself. Um, I know that when I was using a gas oven, I'd use slightly different temperatures, different recipe even overall, but you know, get comfortable with your oven, figure out what works for you. And then once you got your three even rolls, you are good to go. Turn on that, uh, well, turn on that timer for about 20 minutes in my case, and then I will turn the oven on to 485. Once it's ready, we'll stick it in and we're good to go. Uh, side note is that basically Depending on how you want your bread, if you don't want flour on the outside when it's uh, all said and done, what you're going to do is you should take like a little squirt bottle and just simply spray on top of the bread and that'll kind of just let the flour sink into the dough, I guess. And then 
you won't have like a ton of flour on the outside. I like it with more of like a rustic-y kind of flour on the outside, you get a little bit of a char too. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna leave these pretty much as is before they go into the oven. I will show you, however, one of the more important things in letting the bread actually uh, form correctly with a lot of bubbles on the inside and then a properly cooked crust is that you need to cut into the dough. And let me bring this back just so you can see it a little bit more. So the only other side note is that when you see bread in the stores or you know from the bakery, you'll see that there's usually three cuts that go through. And what that does is it makes sure that the crust is still cooking and the insides are still cooking at the same time um, and not just forming a crust on the outside, uh, which if you do that, you'll get more of like a breadstick versus a full, you know, fully formed and, you know, mature bread. Basically, um, you know, you could either do your three cuts. I've heard it say that like, you know, those cuts are a baker's signature. Um, in my case, my cheat sheet is you're going to want to just do one large cut on the top of the bread before it goes into the oven. And I find that that gives me the most consistent width and height on a single um, loaf. Otherwise, when I try doing the three, sometimes I mess up and it'll kind of just look like a finger with like really big knuckles. Um, so and that's not usually good for like sandwiches or whatever. I mean, the bread still tastes amazing, but it's not going to look as good. Um, but yeah, so what you're going to do eventually is I would drop a little bit of water in the edge of your knife and simply whoop, cut right through. And once you do that, you know, all is good, really. You know, you have your the cut, you're ready to go in, and then you slap it into the oven. Don't be afraid to cut, you know, too deep. You, you wouldn't want to go more than halfway into the uh, loaf itself or the, I guess, the dough form here. But, um, yeah, that should basically be it. I will see you when it's fresh out of the oven. Now that we have finished, you know, working our dough, we have everything into its... Um, you know, the baguette pan and it's starting to rise and get all clean, you'll see that we are left with a metal bowl that has a ton of dough sticking on the inside still. And like I said earlier, you know, the reason why we have the flour over on the, you know, countertop is we don't want dough to stick hard and it become hard to clean. So, you know, just like with everything in cooking, you want to make sure that everything is cleaned up ASAP, you know, and either way it'll save you some mess because you're letting this rise for 20 or so minutes. And what I recommend is when you do decide to start making your bread is keep an old sponge around that you know you're gonna toss because um, dough will stick to the sponge and it's a lot easier to clean when you're like, okay, like I don't care about this. So you're basically just gonna, you know, go through, <laughs> clean everything up and uh, yeah, the sooner you do it, the better. Don't let your dough harden. All right, so the bread is in the oven and starting to work and Basically, I don't know if you can see it too well through the uh, the mesh here, but there's ridges cut into each uh, top area just to make sure that everything cooks correctly. And now that we have everything in the oven, we have a huge mess on our countertop. So my little uh, tip, I guess, just for getting rid of everything is to keep either something like your knife, which has like a long uh, straight flat edge to where you could literally just go through and scoop all the flour off of your countertop. That's one way to do it, but you'll still see that there's some areas here that get like a little bit, you know, flattened out. Those are hard to clean up. So generally the best way to get rid of everything is to use water and paper towels. So you could just, you know, dampen up a paper towel. You know, as soon as you touch it onto any flour, it's gonna stick to the paper towel and then you're good to go to just dispose of everything. But otherwise, I mean, you could just take everything and just kind of knock it into a trash can. You should be good. But for anywhere that you have uh, flowers, you know, left over, just a wet paper towel will clean everything up. All right. So all is good. Bread is ready. So we're going to knock down the oven and we are going to grab our fresh bread. And this is, you know, 22 and a half minutes gets it to this like golden brown that I personally like. But, um, you know, if you want less burnt or uh, more burnt, you could adjust times and temps is necessary and let's see this is a little hard with one hand but there you go and you'll see on the bottom of the bread you have all those nice little dots thanks to the pan and we are going to grab all of these drop them off on the cooling rack and bam you just made yourself some fresh bread i would recommend waiting a few minutes at least before digging in because it'll be quite hot 
But um, yeah, and you can see that like, you know, generally I roll mine a little bit stubbier because I like to use mine in, as sandwich breads. Um, so those are pretty good. This one looks really burnt, but it really isn't. That's kind of the lighting. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I like to make mine as like, you know, sandwich bread. So they're nice and wide. But if you want to make a thinner one, you could do that. Adjust your temperatures and such as necessary. And uh, yeah, you'll kind of hear it um, once you bring it out of the oven. It's still kind of baking, kind of like when you cook meat, you want to let it rest uh, right after you, um, you know, take it off the stove or grill or whatever. And basically you're going to hear a little cracking and that's, uh, you know, just the bread still cooking a little bit on the inside. But um, yeah, otherwise just grab your cutting board, grab your, you know, your favorite bread knife and <laughs> go to town and start eating some fresh bread. All right, we have our fresh bread. It's cooled down uh, just a little bit. I think it should be good enough to eat. The hardest part of this whole process is waiting for the bread to be ready, but we're just gonna cut right in. Oops. It's a little hot still, but you'll see on the inside if you rolled everything correctly and you know if you manage your temps, you'll have bubbles that formed on the inside. So that kind of adds to the texture and flavor. This one, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but it's still steaming a little bit. But um, yeah, the crust is nice and thick um, to the point where, you know, and you still have good, you know, fresh dough on the inside, but yeah, it smells really good and it probably tastes pretty good too, so. Yeah, there you go. As always, good bread. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you're enjoying your fresh bread and uh, yeah, peace out. Till next time.